Welcome to the Ideal Investor Show. This is the podcast where we help you challenge your mindset and discover where you are. Tired of stories about other people's success? We can help you change your life, determine your time freedom point and join us on the journey to financial success. Let's go. I'm back for another episode talking about early retirement and how to plan for it and so forth. Because, as you know, our show is called The Ideal Investor Show, The Path to Early Retirement. And so we talked about how do you actually identify the starting point? And that is where you look at how much do you bring in and how much money goes out in expenses every month and can you make improvements to that? Then the next thing is to look at, okay, how... Uh, soon do I actually want to get into early retirement? And for that, if you look at that aspect, what is a realistic amount of money that you can invest? So if you say, okay, I have a thousand dollars a month available and I want to get to early retirement in 10 years, that's 120 months. So you can basically invest $120,000 in those 10 years if you invest $120,000, even if, if that money improves a lot, and you were to go with the early retirement calculator that most of the people in the FIRE movement are actually subscribing to and say, all you need to do is 4%. Now, in episode three, I explained why 4% is not really enough to sustain you long term. But let's just go with the 4%. If you had $120,000 invested in the next 10 years and you take out 4%, that's $3,000 a month. And that's $3,000 a year out of the uh, out of the 120,000. So you need way more than that. You know, if you want for uh, $3,000 a month, you probably need something like 1.5 million. You have to ask yourself, how can I get to that amount? And one of the important things to consider, if you know what the amount is that you want to have as monthly money to have a comfortable life out of your investment, in my opinion, the only way, if you don't want to take 30, 40 years like our parents did, is that you need to find leverage. And that is why I'm such a big proponent of using residential real estate for our investing rather than investing in stocks. Now, let me give you a quick example how that becomes really, really obvious. If you say, I want to have five houses that cost each $120,000, which is $600,000 total, for those $600,000, you need 20% or $120,000 of your own money and the rest would be leverage money from the bank or from lenders. Just a minute ago, I said, if you put $1,000 away for 10 years or 120 months, that's $120,000. But if you use it in residential real estate, you can control $600,000 worth of real estate. What does that mean? If you have these five houses, and in the beginning, these five houses each make $300 in positive cash flow per month. That means in addition to the $1,000 that you are willing to take out of your own income to invest, you would have $1,500 in income from your five houses. Now, can you buy five houses right away when you have $1,000 a month? No. But you can probably buy one of those houses every other year. If you look at it that way, slowly you will increase the amount of money that you can actually invest out of the positive cash flow. And you will be able to consider, okay, as I have this positive cash flow coming in, how much do I really need to live comfortably? If you have $300 on the first house in the first year in positive cash flow, and you go and say, okay, I am a very nice owner to my tenants and I am only increasing the rent by $50 per year, no more. You always only increase the rent by $50 per year. And you should know if you look into the data a little bit more in depth, if you increase the rent, the vast majority of your expenses are not really going to change. The only thing that really applies to the $50 in a meaningful way is your property management. So if you pay 10% for property management, out of those $50, $45 will come to you as cash flow. And if you do this for 10 years, 
because you're such a nice person, even in 10 years from now, you will only increase it by $50. So $45 of each of the $50 comes to you for 10 years. That means the $300 you make right away from the first day and 10 years was worth of $45 is another $450. So that one house is going to make you $750, the first one. And then you buy another one in two years from now, and that will all obviously not have 10 years worth of increases, but only eight years of increases. So it will be probably $650 or something like that per month. But what you can clearly see with those five houses alone, if you were never to invest anything other than only getting these five houses, you could already start generating a pretty substantial passive income in those years until your date on the calendar when you want to retire early. Now, if you go more frugal, if you say from the first episode of this series, yes, I identified I could theoretically invest $1,000, but if I were more frugal or if I get an additional gig job or if I take the money that currently flows into my 401k plan and invest it directly myself, any of those kind of things that allow you to increase the amount from, let's say, $1,000 to $1,500, then you wouldn't have five houses, you would have probably eight houses, right? And so that's something to realize. Now, why am I saying this in the context and comparison to stocks? If you control with $1,000 a month, 10 years in a row, never changing the amount, you would get the $120,000 if you were to buy stock. And it doesn't make any difference what stock. You will only be able to buy $120,000 worth of stock over those 10 years. Whereas with the real estate, you will control $600,000 worth of assets. So you have five times more assets and you as the owner will make all the profit on the assets, not just on $120,000, you will make profit on the whole $600,000. That's the thing that is oftentimes forgotten. That's why I'm saying there's everything right about the FIRE movement, except for the statement that you should use stock index funds. Yes, they are very passive. Yes, they are very easy to do. But the problem is you put $1 in and you get $1 worth of stock. Whereas in real estate, you put $1 in and you get $5 worth of real estate. That's the big difference. And that's something to really consider. And that's why we started Idea Wealth Grow. Or that's why I started the mentoring program. And that's why I keep saying I want to help you retire early. And you can retire much earlier, fundamentally, if you consistently invest and if you do it with leverage. And this part about, by the way, consistently invest. If you cannot find the discipline to put these $1,000 that we spoke about, or 500 in your case, or 300 or 800 whatever your number may be, aside every month, consistently, and not just when the opportunity arises, then you have a chance to retire early. If you take an opportunity because you have $20,000 or $30,000 and you invest it in real estate and then you do nothing again for three or four years, you don't put any other money in or anything, then the plan and the path doesn't work. So we will continue to talk about further things that are all necessary and helpful and hopefully educational on that path to early retirement and go into more detail. But these first four episodes I wanted to really share with you and I want to get across that when it comes to something that takes a while and takes discipline, it is much easier to be successful in it if you have somebody that you like, that you trust, that you like working with, who keeps you accountable, who asks you on a regular basis if you did your investment, if you did your research, if you stuck to the plan, if you wrote things down, and so forth and so forth. And you can, if you have fun with it, you can also be the accountability person for someone else who may have a similar goal of retiring early. Right? That's why we have the mentoring program. It's not just to teach you and set you up and give you the investment opportunities that we have vetted and put the protection plan around you. Yes, it's all part of it. But I think equally important is the accountability. To really stay in touch with you on a regular basis and say, are you really doing it? And like everything, you don't have the, to have the mentoring program for 10 years. You need it maybe for a year and a half. And if you've gone through the process over and over every month for a year and a half, it becomes a habit. You don't even need to think about it anymore. It will just be mainly automated or it will be a habit. And that's what we want to get to. 
and then you can be successful and then you have a great opportunity a great chance to retire early and i want that for you and that's why i want to help you with it so the first step to make that happen if you're now intrigued is to go to idealinvestorshow.com and find the button to book a call so we can have a complimentary conversation and we can see if we fit together if we like each other if you like the way that i actually set this up for myself and many of our other clients so that you can have it too so that's it for today be well and stay safe and i'll talk to you tomorrow